I got the green light. So welcome everyone to uh, the first uh, session of the uh, education series, The Importance of Assyrian Arts. My name is Rochelle Agassi, and I'm going to be the moderator for this session. I'm so excited to introduce our uh, panel artists. And we had one that unfortunately could not make it, but she did do a recording for us. So we'll be watching those as well. So uh, with that being said, I'd like to introduce you guys to Nora Lacey, to uh, Christmas Simon, to Maria Nissan, and Paul Batu. So what I've asked them all to do is <laughs> What I've asked them to do is do a small introduction about themselves and talking about what inspired them to become artists. So we'll start with Nora. So. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Is it working? Is yeah. It's probably not working. Uh, I'll just have to speak loud. Uh, thank you for being here this early in the morning on the first lecture of the lecture series. Uh, my name is Nora Betusev Lacey. I'm the founder of Assyrian Art Institute. Uh, and what I would like to say about Assyrian art and the importance of Assyrian art is uh, many people, uh, and maybe including you, ask uh, why do I uh, put so much energy and resources and focus in Assyrian arts? When uh, our nation uh, has so many needs and there are so many causes that I can be uh, contributing to. And uh, so my, uh, before I answer that question, I would like to uh, just go uh, and say that uh, throughout history, uh, before there was a language that people talked, before there was a community, uh, people used art to communicate because art has a universal language that everybody understands. Uh, and the proof of that is 30, 40,000 year old uh, art that has been discovered in caves. Uh, today they call it cave art. So people of that time, uh, they communicated that they exist, they are what they do in life by drawing in caves. And now we find those caves and learn how people of that time uh, lived and what kind of animals they had at that time and the whole nine yard. Uh, there was actually in 2018, uh, in Turkey, there, uh, there was a remodeling, a house was being remodeled and they found a cave where uh, actually there was Assyrian art uh, of uh, our gods, ancient art, uh, gods that uh, were drawn in that cave. Uh, and that's how we found out that Assyrians were in that region and this is how they communicated their religion or their belief system of that time uh, to future generation, which we are. So uh, history proves that we have used, human beings have used the universal language of art to say they exist and to transfer that information about their existence, their experiences to generations to come. Uh, today is not different. We are doing the same thing. Uh, Assyrian art of today is being produced to, to prove to our next generation and the future that we have continued and we exist and the art that we produce represent the emotions, the policies, the political belief of an artist that is trying to communicate to the world and to the next generation how we feel today. Uh, and in my opinion, and why am I so passionate about art, is that uh, today people don't know Assyrians exist, even in academics. 
So that's why I'm so passionate about having proof that we have continue and we exist. And in my opinion, that's where our causes start. We need to prove that we exist and our artists' emotions in the canvas prove that who we are, what our beliefs are, what our causes are. And so uh, people of the world know we exist today and we leave that art for our future generation as our ancestors have left their art for us to understand who they were and how they lived and what they believed in. So uh, that is the reason I am uh, interested in art. And uh, I wish actually Diana Farrow uh, was with us, uh, the artist that is not, uh, because she is actually part of a wedding. Uh, she couldn't be with us. Uh, but uh, Diana is um, half Assyrian on her mother's side uh, from Turabdeen, uh, Hakari area, and half Irish. And uh, we learned about uh, Diana because she is the founder of Lyric uh, Opera of Orange County. Uh, she is an entrepreneur. She's a soprano opera singer that has uh, an opera house, basically. And uh, this is the type of people we, uh, in a certain art institute, we work with and we like to bring back into the community and keep in the community. And when I start talking to her, she was always teared up and, you know, of excitement that she was born and raised in this country, but, uh, and her family uh, on her mother's side moved to United States when, during genocide. Uh, Ottomans, uh, you know, 1915 genocide, and she has heard all the stories from her grandmother and a little bit from her mother because her mother was young, and now she is getting back into the community that her mother belonged to. And uh, so uh, I would like you to listen to this very talented Assyrian lady, uh, entrepreneur, that has founded a uh, lyric opera of Orange County uh, in one of the most uh, prestigious counties in the country. And she is doing well. So uh, I would ask Rochelle to play her video about her passion for Assyrian art. Hello, my name is Diana Farrell and I live right here in Orange County, California where I am an opera singer and the founding artistic director of Lyric Opera of Orange County. So I don't think there was ever a time in my life where I said to myself, um, yes, I will create art or theater or, uh, you know, I'm a musician now. I've just always been someone who needed to create or dance or sing and um, explore different means of expression, especially with music. And my mother has always been a beautiful dancer and choreographer. So even though I didn't realize it at the time, you know, age six, seven, eight, um, she was giving me a pretty sophisticated introduction to dance and music. Um, and she was really my first teacher, of course, but to me, she was just my mom. And these were the things we liked to do together. <laughs> um, so my mother is a, a non-stop storyteller. <laughs> um, and I grew up hearing all about her grandparents who came to the U.S. from Eastern Turkey um, around the Harput area uh, long before she was born. Um, but that family was full of artists on my great-grandfather's side. Um, there were cousins who were a singer, a flute player, an actor, um, and there was an artist in the family. Um, and they were not necessarily creating Assyrian art, but they were Assyrian artists living and creating in their contemporary America. Um, my mother was the youngest and the only girl in a three-generation household, and she really became the 
depository for her grandmother's stories, you know, of the old country and the lore of our family's uh, unwritten history, you know, the legends uh, that abound within a family. Um, but she shared those stories with us, with her kids. And I think that for me, that provided a real strong sense of belonging and identity and self. Um, who you are informs your art. And I think that when people hear Assyrian art, they imagine these ancient relics and reliefs from thousands of years ago. Um, but being an Assyrian artist, of course, doesn't mean that you simply recreate something familiar. It means that you take what you know of our rich history, um, mix it with your own story, and let that really fuel your modern individual creativity. In my wild accident, it a robber nasha lay out the mud puzzle taka chakli. It la nisiane bidane cases at injury law. Who be al paye kremach. In atin yan kulpatit beta, his mohun, yatane, it lochum bukare, mohburun, il minyan telephone, tmani arupa showa, ucha tmani tre, ucha hamsha, ha ishta, yan, tukun bit, injury rights, dakam. Shimmy Ile Tony Kalagarakis Kiam Zimin Nishani Khilia Dima. Welcome to Assyrian National Council of Illinois. where we provide home care services for the elderly 60 years and older. For over 20 years, ANCI has worked closely with the state of Illinois to strengthen and expand our home care program. We currently service the Chicagoland area, including Cook, Kane, and DuPage counties. If you are interested in finding out more about our home care services, please visit us at our Chicago or Streamwood office. I'm Christmas Simon. I live in Orange County, California, and I uh, did not receive uh, a degree in art. Uh, I uh, got, I'm a graphic designer, but this is just something that I've done as a hobby. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming, and thank you for the organizers for hosting this event. My name is Maria Nissan, and I am an Assyrian environmental artist. I was born here in California, but spent most of my life in Georgia. Both of my parents are from northern Iraq, and I've had a journey of the past 15 years merging environmental issues along with our Syrian rich heritage and culture, and finding a way to represent those two things with iconic images and installations and doing workshops. And this is where I met my partner, Xavier Huber, and we co-founded a nonprofit environmental organization where we give workshops to children around uh, different countries about plastic waste pollution and how we can turn that into art. So this has been my journey, and uh, we just arrived back in the United States and very happy to be here and be part of the Assyrian Convention. So thank you all for coming, and um, nice to meet you. And then we're going to go to Paul Batu. Hi, good morning. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, my name is Paul Batu. 
I was born in northern Iraq in a tiny village at the border of Turkey. Of course, it's not on the map. And the journey from that village was burned in 1961. The journey to travel and immigrate uh, and run away from that village was a strong, long struggle. My primary profession is a pharmacist because when I applied for art school, I wasn't accepted because I have to be Baathist and pro-government uh, propaganda, so I refused that. I went to pharmacy school. There was an art gallery in the pharmacy school, and I enrolled in that gallery, and there was a fine artist, Iraqi artist, who would teach art. So I was like spending most of my time in that gallery, learning the arts. Also, I was going to another uh, university of literature to learn music. My life was busy, and when I come to the United States, I continue with my pharmacy. I was able to get a license, but I work in R2 in downtown LA. In 19... In 1996, I was a part of Art Share in Los Angeles, where we exhibit art, do art galleries, and also we have a school to teach art, chemistry, from volunteer, of course, uh, math to homeless kids, kids with single mother, single father. I was successful uh, in LA Time. I was uh, featured in LA Time, Daily News, Washington Post of Middle East Affairs, and too many, I exhibit in too many galleries in Los Angeles. Thank you all for coming. Well, thank you, everyone. We had some questions that were submitted uh, before the lecture, and then we're going to open up for questions and answers, or questions. Uh, so if an artist here uh, would like to speak on this topic, but why should Assyrians and non-Assyrians pay attention to Assyrian art? Would somebody like to take this? <laughs> non Assyrian, I, I am happy like most of my collector are non Assyrian. Mostly they are American, Jewish, all kind. And why they collect Assyrian art? They are not collecting only art pieces. It should be different, but they're collecting history and story and struggle behind it. It's not like any other artist. So, when enabled to like merged through thousands and thousands of artists in LA and so many art school, you have to come up with a form. They will feel it's different. And that's what I'm trying to do. It's beautiful. Any other thoughts? Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to say um, we need to especially Assyrian community, needs to stand behind Assyrian art and artists to help us uh, preserve our identity in this world. Uh, blacks do a very good job of that. Uh, there are uh, black people, black artists, that all they invest is uh, African art, and uh, they're very passionate about keeping uh, their art uh, and artists prosperous. Uh, and second reason is, uh, actually from experience of being in Assyrian Art Institute, uh, it was a couple years ago, uh, I got a call from Persian, uh, a Persian group, Iranian group, uh, they wanted me to invest in uh, a production that they wanted to do on Epic of Gilgamesh. And I said, what does Epic of Gilgamesh has to do with Iranians? And why can't we, Assyrians, do something with Epic of Gilgamesh, which is, in my opinion, the most important uh, epic in human history because it is the first story ever written in human history by our ancestors. 
So if we respect our ancestors, we need to claim it, not let other nations claim it. Uh, actually, uh, we are doing this at Assyrian Art Institute. Actually, our plan is to create a uh, opera of Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, there has been a couple other operas on Assyrian or Mesopotamian storyline. Uh, one is by uh, Josefe Verdi, uh, Nabucco, uh, about Nebuchadnezzar and his life uh, and Babylonian captivities and stuff. And another one by Rossini uh, about uh, Shamiran, Semiramide. And uh, I think uh, we are determined to make uh, this new opera on Gilgamesh on the same level, to continue to uh, future generations, as Nabucco has continued hundreds of years, uh, and as Semar Ramai, same thing, has continued uh, this many years. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. That's how I met actually Diana Farrow because she is an entrepreneur in opera world uh, and half Assyrian. She considered herself Assyrians because you know mothers transferred the culture to their children. Uh, so uh, her mother did a very good job keeping her very Assyrian. So actually there is a second video that if I may ask Rochelle to play it because it is specifically about the epic of Gilgamesh and how is she producing it. Hello, I am Diana Farrell and I am the producer and librettist for the Assyrian Arts Institute's original production of Gilgamesh. Nora Lacey, um, the president of the Assyrian Arts Institute, reached out to me in late uh, 2022, virtually, and we spoke for a few months about this uh, little project she was developing, uh, which we just simply called the Gilgamesh Project at first. And Nora told me about her work and her mission for championing Assyrian arts and artists through AAI. And I thought, Gilgamesh was the perfect medium to really introduce the organization to the arts world on a much larger stage, nationally and internationally. Um, at the time, what I knew of the Gilgamesh story was, and I now realize, <laughs> quite limited, um, but my takeaway had always been uh, that the legacy you leave is not about your achievements and your conquests, but about how you cared for people and the good you brought into the world. Um, it, like um, Maya Angelou once said, people won't remember what you said or what you did, but they will remember how you made them feel. And that lesson was what I valued most about the Gilgamesh story and legend. Um, you know, this, the king, Gilgamesh, he spent his life seeking immortality, but really his name lived on because of the way he uplifted his people and the good deeds he eventually did. And I thought that is the most beautiful way of introducing Assyrian culture and history to the general public. Um, you know, people think that the stateless nation of Assyria and Assyrians and culture bearers of our traditions have thousands of years of stories of displacement and suffering and war, but what we all carry with us, um, for those who know the history, are the beliefs and traditions and art and ideas that we value the most, um, no matter where we call home. So I was, I was thrilled to hear about Nora's obvious passion um, for the exploratory work that had been happening through AAI. Um, and my background in opera and theater and dance um, made this a particularly thrilling project because it truly felt like an epic undertaking. That sounds so silly to say, you know, like Gilgamesh himself was larger than life. Because um, my mind immediately started to go in a, a million different directions. I mean, each one of these 
11 stories of the Gilgamesh epi um, epic found on these 11 or 12 cuneiform tablets that we consider to be the epic of Gilgamesh. There's so much happening. There are so many characters and the chronology is a little bit wishy-washy. You know, a character dies in one story and then they're alive again in another. Um, anyway, so uh, Nora invited me to be a part of the project and after the first few days I said, so we don't really have a story yet. Um, we know the story, but we don't have our story. Uh, and I thought this is the most wonderful opportunity to reframe the telling of this famous tale um, with that kind of one ultimate message in mind, this idea of our legacy. You know, I was just kind of devouring everything I could on the subject, um, but my initial instincts and takeaway, uh, you know, what I thought the true message of our production was going to be kept ringing in my head. So I started drafting a libretto and fleshing out some of the ideas that Nora and her team were the most passionate about in the story. And it, it really just kind of poured out and the imagery and the strength and the flaws of these characters um, were just so deliciously rich. I'm really proud of what we're creating and very, very honored to be a part of it. Um, right now, uh, I've been a part of the process for, so a little over nine months now. We're currently reviewing applications from composers. It's a very exciting phase of the project. Um, we've had submissions from all over the world and I'm so excited to find the, the right voice to really make the story sing, L literally. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> I, I think that the message we're sharing though um, through this project is the perfect allegory for what it means to be a modern Assyrian person. Uh, whether it's only one part of your identity, like me, um, or an all-encompassing part of your life, it's about honoring those who came before you by loving the ones you're with now. Um, so I, I think that's a, a really a universal message and a great depiction of what it means to be a Syrian. Um, in the meantime, while we're kind of going through this composer search, I'm getting to work with so many talented artists that I've met through AAI. Um, and in just a couple of weeks, I'll be speaking more about the libretto and how we're using English and Assyrian and Aramaic to share the story at the Nineveh Chair's second annual symposium at the University of Salamanca in Spain, um, where AAI is also producing an incredible concert featuring the amazing peerless Omar Bashir. Uh, the concert is also incorporating modern and traditional dance um, and really giving us a great chance to kind of brainstorm about some of these additional elements for Gilgamesh as we plan out that next phase of production. Um, it's been really wonderful getting to meet and work with the concert's director, the new Assyria concert, um, the concept from director Dahlia Asherina. Uh, it's really thoughtful and, and cool. Um, she's presenting the concert in a diachronic way. Um, demonstrating or, or kind of revisiting the gradual changes of the Assyrian language over the course of time um, through music. It's a really exciting undertaking and kind of feels like the kickoff um, to what's going to be a really amazing couple of years uh, for the Assyrian Arts Institute as they really step into the spotlight. I have so many awful puns, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I could be with you there today um, in my backyard in Anaheim. And uh, I hope you get to hear more about all these exciting projects very soon. Thank you. Thea Realty and Finance is a one-stop shop. We do it all from loan, real estate, property management, credit fix, and credit rescore, and so much more. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate, including homes, businesses, or commercial real estate, Johnson Hermos can guide you through the process. 
If you're looking for a loan, including purchase loan, refinance, FHA, VA, investment, DSCR, hard money, W-2 only, bank statement, stated income, reverse mortgage, and so many other loan programs, give Johnson Hormoz a call. With over 17 years of experience and several hundreds of successful transactions, he can guide you through the process. If you have no credit, bad credit, bankruptcy, foreclosure on your credit report, let Johnson Hormoz help you to get your loan. Let me coach you to success. Your success is my goal. DRE number 0176892. NMLS number 264726. Welcome to Assyrian National Council of Illinois. Where we provide home care services for the elderly 60 years and older. For over 20 years, ANCI has worked closely with the state of Illinois to strengthen and expand our home care program. We currently service the Chicagoland area, including Cook, Kane, and DuPage counties. If you are interested in finding out more about our home care services, please visit us at our Chicago or Streamwood office. Perfect. Well, uh, as I said, we have some uh, questions, but are there any questions out in our audience first. And if you guys think of anything, please feel free to raise your hand uh, and we'll definitely call on y'all. Uh, while we are going, as I said, we do have some seed questions. Um, I think one of the, the biggest ones, especially for Assyrian youth, is how can we get more Assyrian youth to embrace art? Um, I have some advice for the future Assyrian artists out there or people that think that they might want to dive into it but feel a little insecure. You should just go for it because it's your responsibility. We are a minority and our past ancestors have really hindered in on their Assyrian art skills and representing our people since the beginning of time. So it's within us to continue this path and to continue this righteous gift that's given to us. The next thing I would suggest is to use social media. It is a platform where we can unite all Assyrians together globally and internationally. I have met so many people online through social media that are Assyrian artists and Assyrian people advocating for our voices. And just, I mean, I know some of you in the crowd right now through Instagram, and I'm, I'm just saying that that's a great resource and tool to have. And then the third thing is reach out to your support system. Because we are a strong community and we unite together, everyone is willing to help. Me being here right now is pure animation of the support I have from not only the founders of Syrian Art Institute, but AANF. And people believing in us and wanting that legacy to continue on through the future generations. Well, Maria, um, you're actually teaching a class on Sunday. And um, I'd love you to talk a little bit more about that and your inspiration behind uh, what type of art you actually create as an environmentalist. So I am hosting an upcycling workshop on behalf of Microplastics Joe on Sunday. If you all are around, we would love to have you to come and work with us together. It's going to be from 11 to 1 p.m. tomorrow. 
We are taking single-use plastic trash that my partner and I collected during our time in Southeast Asia and upcycling it into really cool jewelry and brooches with iconic symbolism, uh, the Assyrian flag, Lamu, different kinds of images on it. So you can represent our people and look really cool afterwards. It's a fun activity, adults and kids are invited. And I guess the inspiration behind that is that during my time in Jordan, we had spent four years doing these workshops. And during my time, one thing that was popping up constantly is that there was a huge amount of plastic pollution there. And also, people didn't know who we were, which I know you guys all know in America, everyone thinks we're from Syria. That's a thing that happens all the time. But Jordan is a bordering country and a neighboring country to our community. They should know who we were, but no one knew who Assyrians were. So I felt like I needed to make a voice for this. I needed to make a voice for our people. And I needed to also raise awareness about our plastic pollution that's harming our future generations. So I combined those two things. And uh, what we've been doing with these workshops in Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, we have now brought to California. So this will be our first workshop in the United States. And um, if you all are around, we'd love to have you come and participate. So Paul, talking about education and teaching, we know that you have throughout the years, especially before the pandemic, uh, were involved and in, actively involved in participating in the Assyrian community in teaching classes like paint nights uh, to the youth. So what is it like teaching your passion to the Assyrian community and bringing that passion to the youths? Yeah, thank you, Nora, first, and the Assyrian Art Institute for providing that platform. But I did organize so many paint nights. And the youth, they love it. Uh, art is a harmony, is a nature. And when they do art and paint, I ask them, why, what do you feel? You told me I feel in peace. I am away from everything around me, from Trump, Biden, whatever, the political and, and the news the crimes, the homelessness, and everything. He's away. He's with colors. He's with uh, harmony. That's for the nature. And they all feel happy. Well, I feel like art should bring happiness to anyone who's doing it. It's a great way of getting your creative juices out. It's, na it's nature. It's, 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 you, it'll provide you with very peaceful mind. And art also is important, like, I always encourage my son to come to me to the concert, theater, art shows, since he was young. Uh, he, when he was a teenager, asked me, Dad, why? I told him, this is what reflect on your math science. He didn't become an artist, but he became a doctor, a successful doctor in Berkeley. This is art will affect even if you are not artist. It will affect your ability to succeed in life. Yeah. Christmas. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge for non-Assyrians to get passionate about Assyrian art, or even Assyrians to get passionate about Assyrian art, and not think of it just like as a hobby, but as something that they can actively pursue? I know we're uh, having some of your artwork being presented at the art gallery, so I'd love to just kind of hear your, your thoughts on that. Thank you. Uh, I think there's a prerequisite to that passion that uh, you're, at, you're talking about. The prerequisite is, first of all, um, non-Assyrians should know who Assyrians are in order to uh, have passion for the Assyrians and Assyrian arts. And how do we accomplish that is through ourselves. It's very cheap, it's inexpensive, it's free. All we have to do is to make ourselves known to non-Assyrians as to who we are. We don't miss any time to let them know who we are by all my friends know who Assyrians are. Uh, strangers know who uh, Assyrians are when I speak to them at grocery stores or anywhere I go. 
and they ask, where's that accent from? And I tell them, I do take the time to let them know who we are. So that's prerequisite to them showing passion to Assyrian art. And how do we accomplish um, that passion through non-Assyrians who know Assyrians or through, first of all, AAI, who is the biggest stepping stone to our future Assyrians to follow their path. Uh, and the best thing to do is through our schools, uh, we can have not only Assyrian art like paintings, but dances, culture, language. We have to take lessons from Persians, Armenians, and other blacks, as you mentioned, and follow their footsteps, know how what they're doing, and we do the same thing. So um, we have great artists here on this panel and elsewhere, and even those who have the passion for art and have not expressed their passion through the brush st stroke and on canvas, that we can open our own gallery, gather all these Assyrian artists, have our own galleries. And so that would be the best thing, in my opinion, to, to have non-Assyrians know who we are and what our artwork is. And uh, so, and I again thank Nora for all her efforts. Really, it's a very difficult task. It's, it's very, very difficult. And thank you, Rochelle, for all you do. And we really appreciate it. And you have brought passion to us to, to do what we're doing and to continue to do what we're doing. Thank you. Can I add something? Please. Uh, I appreciate uh, appreciating Assyrian Art Institute. Uh, I want to stress that my passion is based on my belief that you mentioned Armenian, you, we mentioned blacks or uh, Iranians. They have a country. They can always say, this is Iranian art, this is Armenian art. We don't have a country, we're stateless. So let's use universal language of art to show that we exist. That's the least we can do. And the only way we can do that is to support our talented artists to create art that meet today's quality standards to make us proud to say we are Assyrian. We don't want to put an art out there that people say this is a child work or for performing art, this is uh, not a quality performing art. We cannot do that because it's going to backfire. It's going to embarrass us. What we need to do, we need to support artists that believe in quality and they know today's quality standards and they need them and we put and support those artists and we put them out there to say we have continued and we exist. Very critical for a stateless nation like ours, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah no, that's we need like, we need support from a Syrian artist. A Syrian have to think art as investment, yes. like other people, it's, it's investment. These, you purchase a painting now, and two generations, that will be valuable. I'm very happy like now in November, uh, Irish uh, Modern Art Museum will publish one of my painting, Assyria Will Rise. That will be distributed in 100 countries. This is what we have to do. We have to show our art, then the other will recognize it. Men meditated Anaheim, California, United Assyrian Convention. Amanile, Ha Sayorum, U Mashuham Shemham, Yokra Paul Beitu, Uptalban Menu, Hatra Hamzam Budgano, Yokra Paul, Hatra and Basmalo Huntanilan Budgano, Hun Bushran at Vedit. How it in the Simra, Bashimi Paul Batu, Anaman Brian Guhamat at Iraq, border of Turkey, nineteen fifty nine. 
فينا شو لي فارماسيست تيم بس اسير ان ارتست تيم اي شيء تشارك لي من ما بيسز من ارت بيسز اوريجينال ارت بيسز مثل كتابي دي فوليوم 1 فوليوم 2 ماي ارت ماي بيبول او فيرست اسير ان ارت بوك وورد وايد ان ذا ماركت ومين خلص برنت او باي برنت لا اوريجينال اباني افيلابل ولا باسی من رابا، این کیا خطر بود بودن شلوانت قطع از اشی تویده تون هم زمیتون؟ اتلی آن اطلاع شلوانه اشی تویده 223 اشتار ان بلک روب 1 اشتار ان بلک روب 2 اشتار ان بلک روب 3 آن خیلی نه باگراندی هن کومله رپرزنت اگه آرابای کم شکلیل مسافتیمیا فکل کم آذیل بیاد متولی خلتر ای ان أجت آيسس وروا للنينوة متولة الكل بتاني ديان إن نصارى لايك إنفيدلز وبس أني لمسي شابي شابي روثا وميزوبوتيميا وسبيشالي إشتار بس تيم رابا رابا شابير نام بعدين طلبوا من أخون خد جام زميتون شون أخون خا كتابة دقيتون إن كوي خد جام زميتون بعض الكتابة قد بسمناتون With what he publish our tower, my art, my people, and the first Assyrian art book go market. Why we don't have Assyrian art book go bet go bet what? So with what he publish an art, it's really five years in that in play how go art and will publish. In Khazut Nile, I ni kulla it over kut tower ibe two hundred three hundred art pieces. باستی من رابا رابا شابی را کتاب ولی من رو خون کت اتلو خون کتاب خات قدرشی تبیتاینا. اتلی فالیوم وان فالیوم تو خا خینا سپرینا آدن فالیوم سری تو. باستی من رابا. آبیتون رابا باستی. درست شلما بدار و خامخون من ایجین تی وی نایرید اسیرین کنвенشن ای و خلاها گو اسیرین آرت اینستیتیوشن اتلاها شوروم اودیو دخ بدای تون اسیرین آرت اینستیتیوشن پشتله شوت استبیاد میگرتا نورا لیسی اینا اودیو آمان ایلا میگرتا راشل قاسی رپرزنتیف اند کوردینیتر و بطل بان منو قدیا و خامد آنوتا و هر از خم زم ما بعض شلوان قد اودیو پیش نمکروال حضور آخون راشل ام جست کنی گیو یو دی میکروفون پلیز جست تل اس ا لیتل بیت ابوت تودیز آرت اکسیبیشن اند ویچ آرتیستس ورک آر اول تودی آر بین رپرزنتیف Yes, hi, my name is Rochelle Agassi, and as it was introduced, I'm part of the Assyrian Arts Institute Art Gallery. This year, our theme was the Assyrian beauty because we really wanted to uh, describe that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and we've, we're bringing in artists that show beauties in different ways. So we have beauty from our traditional uh, oil paintings to, you know, as you can see, paintings on plastic bags from our environmentalist Maria Nissan, who is actually here present uh, at our gallery. We also have many artists who uh, use different types of mediums like fabrics, like uh, color pencils, for example, to really create beauty from different inspirations that come from being an artist. So we're really excited about being able to present these different artists who might not always have an ability to um, showcase their work to the Assyrian env environment. So uh, we have a couple different uh, artists here. We have five in total. We have Christmas Simon, uh, who's kind of in this location over here. Last year, we uh, showcased Ninos Tabet, and uh, he was a sculptor and a painter. And we do have some of his old uh, his paintings that he did after the, our exhibit that we actually have on display here. As I mentioned, we brought in the uh, 
our environmentalist artist, Maria Nason, who's actually from Thailand. And she came here uh, to kind of represent the importance of saving the planet while bringing art to it. So uh, she kind of used the Assyrian women as her inspiration to creating these pieces of work. We also have a very young, exciting uh, artist, uh, Bianca, who brings in uh, a new flair to uh, Assyrian art, from clothing as in uh, design, as well as uh, 3D models and options like that. She really likes to bring uh, Assyrian symbols into her work. Last but not least, we have Odette uh, Tumak, who uh, unfortunately is not able to be here with us. But she has a beautiful uh, just range of art from uh, explaining the story of Gilgamesh to what it looks like in the Assyrian lifestyle and the women who are uh, part of that lifestyle. So we are very excited to show Assyrian beauty uh, and just the, the creation of uh, art through the generations. Thank you, Rochelle. This is an amazing collection, and from you explained, there is so much to see, so much to learn. And if it's okay with you, we want to talk to some of those artists that are present here. Yes. Um, if it's okay, we can start with Maria. Perfect. Yes. <clears throat> Hi, Maria. So this is Maria, and um, Maria, just tell us a little bit about yourself and about your um, arts that are beyond imagination, they're breathtaking. If you could please tell us a little bit about yourself and what is it, the message behind these beautiful pieces? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me, first of all. And um, my name is Maria Nissan. I am an Assyrian environmental artist. So what that means is I basically go and I collect plastic waste and plastic trash and I upcycle that into something that is new and transformed and looks very beautiful. Specifically, this series over here is called Assyrian Mother Earth, and it symbolizes all the females in our family, all our mothers, cousins, aunts, and gives this type of nurturing feel as they are represented as Mother Earth on these plastic bag collages. Um, they're all made from different kinds of mixed medias, but the whole idea about all of this work is that Assyrians are strong female leaders in our household and we need to be represented more often in our work and in our art specifically. So what better way to do that than upcycling art and giving a strong message attached to it. Thank you, they're breathtaking. Can, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You're, where are you from? I know you said you're Assyrian, but can you tell us a little bit about your roots? And yes, so both of my parents are from northern Iraq. I was born here in California, actually, and I've spent the past seven years traveling abroad to different countries, working on upcycling projects, making sure that um, I'm giving workshops about plastic waste, why it's bad for the environment, raising awareness, but also speaking to the Assyrian heritage, because I spent some time abroad and quickly realized that even in the Middle East, people didn't know who Assyrians were. So it was really important for me to give a voice to our people and I use social media as a platform to do that, using all kinds of hashtags, making sure I reach out to the communities everywhere so people know who we are. And I do that by representing iconic images, shapes, our jewelry, our different kinds of fashion styles on our women as a way to raise awareness about our culture and our heritage because that's important. This is amazing. Thank, Thank you, you, Maria. So it was an honor to meet you. So nice Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you for, for your time. You Thanks a lot. Thank you. So now um, we have other artists here. Um, um, Bianca, if you could please, Bianca, uh, come here and introduce yourself a little bit, and then we're going to go and see your pieces. Shlama Lachon, and I want Bianca. Um, my background is in fashion and art. I was really passionate about displaying my art this year because the theme is basically on diversity and creativity among the Assyrian community. It's cool that we have all these different types of people of different ages and Assyrians from different backgrounds and locations and we have all these different types of mediums that we're able to express. 
my artwork in general. I like things like oil painting, I like fashion, I have a collection of made out of denim that I sewed and I like a lot of like motifs and like Assyrian symbols to incorporate into my pieces. I like a lot of like surre surrealism and also things out of the ordin ordinary or creativity, things that you wouldn't expect it could be and it portrays as something else. Um, yeah, so I'm just excited to be showcasing my artwork and bringing a different perspective into the Assyrian community and I hope all of you guys appreciate my artwork. Thank you. Can we go and see some of your um, um, art pieces and tell us a little bit more from yeah. close? So could you tell us a little bit about these paintings? Yeah, sure. So I actually grown up and I started with oil painting. I was actually fortunate for my parents to enroll me into um, painting classes and then throughout that I did art classes. So as you can see, I started off with like oil painting first. I was inspired by different types of like locations, like this is the Eiffel Tower and then um, this was like, I had gone on a cruise and I was inspired by the way like the menu and, and the way the scenery is, like mm -hmm. still life, so I enjoy that. But then there's also things here that are more like out of the box kinds of things. Like you can see this one, it's it's pretty creative. I am I really like putting things that you wouldn't expect to put together into one piece and it, it comes out looking like something unique and, and different and people uh, really see things that are, are different, uh, whatever like calls out to them, like it, yeah, they could, you could just see something differently here. Every time you look at it. That's, that's really beautiful. Can you tell us a little bit about this piece? That was the one that I really liked. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I really like hearing people's favorites. Um, so this is actually, um, I had gone on a trip to Venice and so I was inspired by the architecture over there and like the history of their buildings. And so, like I said, I like things that you wouldn't expect to be. So I was inspired to, you know, there you see like a woman here, but then you see there's other parts to it. Um, so she's actually forming into like this building. And so she's like, it's kind of like nature, but also like humanity and like, life and like just the architecture and things like that so yeah amazing um and these are your pieces as well right yes, can you tell correct. us a little bit about these pieces yes. they look mu much different than the oil painting and other yes. painting so like i said this was the collection i did um i did go to fashion school so i got to travel and i built a collection on denim and so i was inspired by um like tokyo japan and like the lifestyle over there so and I also like uh, different types of graphics and artwork, so I put like um, different kind of symbols here. And then we go on to more like things with like Assyrian symbols. So like here you have like the Allah Asher over here, and then I think this um, symbol means um, a god in cuneiform. And um, these are like different types of masks. And then we have this one with a bunch of different Assyrian symbols as well. And then this is a painting of a place in Italy, and then another place in Italy. This is the swan. Beautiful. Yeah. Very colorful. Thank you. Yeah, I really like experimenting with different types of like colors and different types of ways of like. Sometimes I use marker. Sometimes I use charcoal. Sometimes oil painting. Um, like gluing things together. Like these are like bullets over here and like flowers, inspired by like nature also. And then you have like this something like this where like it depends what you really get drawn to. So sometimes people will see like the face or like like what are these? Like these are actually mazes. I went to a museum and I was inspired by by that. And then also like there's a lamp here. So like things that like it depends what people like gravitate their eyes to. Um, and then I have a, actually a lamassu mm -hmm. um, made out of shells. Mm -hmm. And then this one is an Assyrian woman. It has the tree of life over here and then uh, different Assyrian symbols. Beautiful. And then two more artworks left. Yes. And then here we go. This was uh, part of the other things you see a little similarities. So this one I was inspired by the Assyrian community. This one has more of a deeper meaning to me. So basically 
you see a cube here, right? And um, when you turn it, you're supposed to unlock something. So I aligned that with the Assyrian community and unity, you know? So once you have the special key and you unlock it, you know, there's like growth and like unity and, and things like that. So I think this one has like a really good um, impact behind, like a message. Beautiful, yes. And then this one, this was part of the same collection of that one, mm -hmm. so yeah. Amazing job, they're really beautiful. Each one sends a different message and it's beautiful. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your own, like, um, uh, I believe you've been born background? in background, yeah. yes. So I actually was born in the US, I'm from Los Angeles. Um, my dad was born in Iran, but Matid um, Minjilu. so that, that's my background. Um, yeah, basically um, I grew up in the Assyrian community and I've started getting involved with more Assyrian activities and I've just been passionate about bringing Assyrians together either through, you know, art or like um, having like a stronger youth and, and things like that. Thank you. We really appreciated your time. It was really nice meeting you. Yeah, Thanks a lot. Basimta. Bazaar wa kisla hun man AGN TV. Amman ila miqarta Christmas. O itla khakma raba shapire art pieces lakha. Qad btalban mina khatra hamza ma basi qatan. O khatra bu shaba madia la gano man iman shuri tula ashula. O in an kamsat khatra bu shaba hamza ma bazit. What is it? Mu itin barda niqad atin tuhmin tadan shulane adatlon. راب بغداد نه یت راب بسی مبشل تیلوخون مغبن اطرایی اب چریم من آها پینتینگ ایلا اسیرین جنسایت ایلا کالر پنسلز و انکل جوله این پارچه دستمالد اید داز پارچه نه سو اتس لایک ا میکسد میڈیا آرت بسی من خرطا آها ایلا آتورایی، این کل دقنه و کوسه این استنترک هر قطعه موتخ موتیتن آل پدفاته ترمینگز و راینستونز و بیدینگ و این کل این کالر پنسلز. سو آه تازه پرختن شیت ترمو استری استری دل، سو آه آرت خاره تیلا. روبا شابی رو رنگی مپلخت دیگه. آن رنگی روبا مگم کنم رنگی. یه ایکن تیل. روبا کی مگم؟ روبا خدوت اتین یه دار پیس روبا خدوت اتین. باشیم تر روبا. خب بذار سفر دخیت. آه ایلا پرچن مینیاتور مینیاتور قطع کنه. اند کل بیدینگ زینا میدری کل کالر پنسلز اند بیدس لینا آل یدالا لینا پارچا اند کل خخه پیش نموده آلو آها قربت اشت شوایر خیرشلا یوما اسرسات تری سرسات او آها راب قدی اند قتل آها ایلا کد آها سب آها خاره تا قد دپا متعلی لخه خشتی مارس خانه قد قبراتی دنیو میم با. سو اقتو دادکید و توم بوده لنز ابونو. اینا عرب قدی سپشل. رابا شابرت ممیوریتن بارو. رابا شابرت آد رابا کالرفول و بیوتیفول. ات سو بیوتیفول. اسمت رابا. خدتر تا آخر رابا رنگی و شابی نه از یوزوال کلن پیس رابا شابی رنگی پرشی نه خدتر یکم صد بازد این اتن استوری بیهند آت تانی قطع. اختر شکل خزیت من را به انسپایر بیت من بی رنگی و بو کوس و کوس سویس و را به خدیت ل. سو از مدر کالر پنسلزی ل لیتل خ متیل تبارو. بر خاصو اینه از کل اینه اینه کالر پنسلز و ترمینگ و مدر راینستونز اه مخ. امت قد بعد خبیدینس و سیکونس و ادغامی آن خورتا که مدت قد وار الله خیلی من دانست از آردس البته آن آن خوابی بدن لین فرمال ادیکیشن یو آرتش قلتا آن پرختو یو گرافیک دیزاین دیگری یو گرافیک دیزاین بیت لینه آمین میجد بی هر خوابی شوری تون اینه 
هرات قد شن وارنا شخلو پلا ميديا شخلو پلا ميديم شخلو پلا مود من يعني بخفاض نجاو بشه عادي لخ بيدين اتن لخ بيدي اتن تام اتن اد قامة بارتشل سو خيك من دانات شخلو پلا و لم بيا قارس نرچي كو خا ميديم و بيان من يعني پريشو پريشو اتن قد it represents me extension of my feelings and my passion for art. Robert Shapiro now. Robert, Marin Khaduta Maina, and Rengi Shapiro, Robert Khaduta Maina. Oh, yeah, Robert, what's up to me about Christmas? Yes, I'm Khnochon, and I'm Khnochon. What's up, Robert? What's up? تن موقع به خزیال خون اکسیبیتد آرت استن آرت اینستیتیوشن بطلا به من منو خون قد ادمیجت سپورت آدی تون دن آرتس سرای ادملتن دخ بخزای تون رابا رابا شابی رپیسز اتن لخ قد در بیاند ماجنیشن و ام بس مالو خون جربون قد این آرتس مچخی تون لون ان اومد یه قدر اودیو خزیل آخوند که دایکس بذار کم سیتون از ایتون آل وبسایت اسیریان آرت اینستیتیوشن و گیت سوم مور دیتالز خدا دیتال بوش را با مچخیتون و خرطام ام بس مال آخوند ام بخزایتون پیسز قد آل وبسایت اولیبل تایی سپورت بودن شکولون یو بت فاتو خون متیمون Especially I exhibit Robert Shapert a combination of my messages, beautiful colors, and I'll promise you, but may Robert had to tell you about that. I have to tell Robert about it. So before we go into the other ones, I know we're running short on time. Number one, so everyone else, if you guys can. They will also be at the uh, art gallery today. So uh, feel free to please come and talk to them and get their personal story, especially Maria and uh, Christmas. Um, I do want to have them answer your question, but I just want you guys to know I do want to be a little bit respectful of the time. So uh, we can elaborate a little bit more uh, at the art gallery. So please do come visit. We are open uh, today at four. And we are also open uh, tomorrow uh, starting at 10 a.m. So please, Maria. 
I think as an Assyrian, when we make art, it is by definition Assyrian art. Um, just to simplify that. That's my opinion. I don't know if it's factual, but that's what I believe. As a Syrian artist, when we make art, whether it's contemporary or performance art, it's Assyrian art because we have it in our blood. To answer the second question was what inspires us? So what inspires me the most is when I get research about Assyrian heritage and find that there's always a connection with our people and nature because we've always used our irrigation system and the way that we are with nature depicted in our images since forever. And I find that that's very useful and also the females in our household. I feel like a lot of Assyrian art is represented um, by men, for men. So it doesn't really represent the women in our household who keep everything together and who are really working to raise our children and depict that type of imagery. So I am always about female and nature the most. Please, Christmas. Assyrian art should be relatable and recognizable because we can look at uh, a black art and we will not think it's an Assyrian art. For me, what, ins what was the question again? The, the, what, this, inspire, what inspires me, Assyrian yes. Art, I, yes. I'd like you to define what Assyrian art is. Is it the artist who's Assyrian? There's an element of Assyrianism in your art. What do you consider? It has to be an element of Assyrians in it. It doesn't have to be an Assyrian flag or Malik Tasha Miram on it, but it, when you look at it, you would know this is an Assyrian art. Just a very simple. But what inspires me is I can look at, um, I can just go through photos of family or, or any kind of photos, and something just pops up, and I, and I say, wow, this, this is what I can do with this photo. And it can, something can click in my mind, and I can create something completely different from that, looking at that photo, and inspires me to create something. Well, I just want to say thank you so much to our panel. I apologize that we don't have any more time for questions. But as I said, if you do have questions for any of our artists, please stop by at the AI Art Gallery at the, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but the Avali uh, Room, which is just on the other side of the, the escalators that are coming up. With that said, thank you, Paul, Maria, thank Christmas, so and Nora, for uh, participating today. And thank you so much, AANF and Assyrian Advisors, for letting us talk about the importance of Assyrian arts. In my wild accident, it's a robber nasha layout name with Pasul Taka Chakli. It's a Nisiane Bidane cases at injury law. Who be Alpaye Kremer? In Aten Yankul Petit Beta, his mohun. Yatani, it lochum bukare, Magburun, el minyan telephone, Tmani Arupa Shawa, Ucha Tmani Tre, Ucha Hamsha, Ha Ishta, Yan, Tukun Bit, Injury Rights, Dakam. Shimmi Ile, Tony Kalagarakis, Kiam Zimin Nishan Chilia Dima. Welcome to Assyrian National Council of Illinois. Where we provide home care services for the elderly 60 years and older. For over 20 years, ANCI has worked closely with the state of Illinois to strengthen and expand our home care program. We currently service the Chicagoland area, including Cook, Kane, and DuPage counties.
If you are interested in finding out more about our home care services, please visit us at our Chicago or Streamwood office.